Illinois Stories is brought to you by the Corporation for Public Broadcasting, Illinois Arts Council Agency, and by the support of viewers like you. Thank you. Hello, welcome to Illinois Stories. I'm Mark McDonald in Quincy with The Quincy. This is the old pumper from 1839, and every once in a great while, the Quincy Fire Department gets it out and shows its stuff, special occasions and things like this, and we're very glad today that they considered Illinois Story a special enough occasion to get the old pumper out. Let's take a look at how this thing works. Cole Miller, I, you know, I called it the number one, because I guess that's what they called it way back when. Some folks were calling it rough and ready. Mm -hmm. Some people were calling it pumper number one. Mm -hmm. But at any rate, whatever you call it, in 1839, this was the state of the art, wasn't this it? This was high tech firefighting apparatus. Yeah, what, and what would, t tell us, how would you get this to the site of a fire? What, what would, how would you, how would you get it moving where, where you needed to go? Uh, when an alarm came in, you would have to have your fire crew, which all volunteer at the time, mm -hmm. um, they would come to the fire station this would be stored with the tongue. This is the tongue, and this tongue would be stored up. Mm -hmm. They just lower the tongue. Guys would grab the tongue. Guys would grab the brakes and a rope, and they would pull it by hand to the fire. Man powered. You Man pull power. it by. Okay, mm -hmm. so no no horses, nothing no like horses, that. Three Two guys horses. would get on one guy on each side, and they just haul it. Mm -hmm. huh? Yep. Well, they had to be in pretty good shape to do that too. Yeah, it probably because it's, it's heavy. Tough guys. I imagine yeah. it's yeah, heavy. Yeah, it's sixteen hundred pounds. Is what this weighs. <laughs> And, and that's when it's empty. Of course, when, right. it, when you get it full of water, of course, you're not pulling you're not it then, but then you're then. getting it full mm -hmm. of water. It's a beautiful thing. Let's take a look at, at this mm -hmm. insignia that shows where it was made. Um, that, that gives you an idea right there. It was made in New York City. And this would have been, I mean, they, they were building a lot of these because the way communities were growing in the 1830s and 40s, everybody needed one of these, right. didn't they? Yes, yeah, yeah. Every major city would have had one. And at the time, any major cities were a lot smaller than major cities today, of yeah. course. but. Quincy was a major city in Illinois at that time. Yeah. Um, they were pretty much close to the size of Chicago, about equal. So no one, uh, no one really knew exactly who was going to be the city in, mm -hmm. in Illinois at that time. Mm -hmm. but, now we're going to see this thing operate again, mm -hmm. and we're going to see how the water gets, yeah, where, where it goes uh, to, to the fire, it comes mm -hmm. through the hose and it shoots to the fire. But let's start at the back end, because okay. that's where the real business happens. Right, right. right. That's the important part. Now, you, you're not going to have one of these set up in the right. street. Right. This is a modern portable dump tank, um, collapsible tank for uh, firefighting when you don't have a water supply, hydrants nowadays. Mm -hmm. But back in the day, back in, in the Quincy's day, it had, they had cisterns around town. And, you know, every house pretty much had its own cistern. Mm -hmm. But there was public cisterns throughout the city, too, which throughout the city you were looking probably eight or ten square blocks. You know, and they would time. have they would have engineered this into the plan because knowing that a pumper was going to need water, or even if you didn't have a pumper, if you had a bucket brigade, right. you were going to need cisterns. You're going to need water from somewhere. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you had mm -hmm. cisterns designed into the city plan, Correct. and it would have looked wouldn't have looked like this, but it would have been a, a vessel for, yes, for water. Yes. Okay. Yes. And so, in fact, John Wood Mansion had a cistern there somewhere on the grounds, a large one, mm -hmm. and they were said to be interconnected with other cisterns around the neighborhood mm -hmm. and that way they all maintain that same level of water and so one would never run dry from oh that from makes a lot of sense mm -hmm. yeah, yeah network okay yeah. so let's let's assume now this is let, would, would this would this um uh, this pipe or this what, that's not hard suction is yeah, what they would, call that would, would mm -hmm. that have been down in the cistern yes okay. yes this the end of the essentially like a lot like this with a screen a, a mm -hmm. strainer mm -hmm. um it would be lowered down into the cistern okay Let's go take a look inside. Okay. So this is the back of the, the engine. Uh, right now we have a modern pressure gauge. There's a plug that would have been in there. This hard okay. suction travels through the back <clears throat> and mm -hmm. is connected to this intake pipe. Um, and that's how then they would have lowered it into the cistern and that's how they were running it today. Without a water supply, uh, as such as a cistern, the the back end would be capped where the hard suction leads mm -hmm. into, and this would have been lined with pitch or lead. Mm -hmm. This lid would be propped open, and you'd have a bucket gate or a line of people carrying oh, passing goodness. buckets to dump into the tub oh. and to keep water 
in there while the guys that it. would have been a challenge it would have been a lot of work and yeah. a lot of teamwork you know yeah it's, yeah so you would have most likely recruited not everybody could be firefighters so you would have that's a simple job that any man woman and child yeah. could have done and yeah with the threat I, I, of fire in an old building, these older buildings, then everybody was, it was all hands on deck. I, I like the sister and idea a whole lot better. Yeah, I think they, <laughs> the they did too. Yeah. Yeah, but they so did this too. was, this particular fire engine wasn't lined. It doesn't appear to be lined mm -hmm. with anything. So that leads you to believe that it wasn't designed to hold water. So it was probably drawing water from a cistern or uh -huh. from a static water okay. supply mm -hmm. instead. I don't know what adding lead to it would have just made it even heavier too back in the That's day. That's for sure, for sure. Okay. So we'll take the, the cabinet off here and you'll be able to see exactly how it works. Again, that's why they call this the tub, because it's essentially a, mm -hmm. a tub to hold the water. This would have just been flooded if you used it that way. You see there's a drain hole there. Right. But today, the way we have it with the hard suction, it, it's drawn in to this manifold down below these two cylinders. Mm -hmm. Um, as you pump, there's piston. It's br all brass. It would have had a leather gaskets in there or cups. Which of course would have worn out regularly. Had to be right, or kept yeah. oiled. They would have had to keep them oiled, mm -hmm. whale oil or whatever they use then. And so essentially what you're doing is you're pumping. When you raise the brake, yeah, you're ahead. drawing the water up into this cylinder. Well, at the same time, this cylinder it's full of water. It is pumping it into this another manifold mm -hmm. with a one-way valve, and it's filling this tank back behind here. So one is always drawing in water suction. The other is pumping it into this pressure right. tank. Right, and the idea is to keep this thing as full as possible. Correct. Because when yes. you have a, the air at the top provides the pressure that pumps the, That's the right. water through the hose. That's right. It is a, a siphon tube mm -hmm. that runs all the way down the bottom towards the bottom. As you pump water into this tank, mm -hmm. say about right in here is about 30 psi is what you'll have in air pressure. You get it up to here, you got 15. P mm -hmm. I'm sorry, you have 15 down here. You got 30 up here, and then so the harder you're pumping, the men are pumping, the more water you're getting, the higher the pressure is getting, and mm -hmm. so the farther you're spraying. And what do you think? How far do you think it'll spray if you get all the pressure you can get? I bet if you were working this back in the day when it was original, you'd probably get 125. 150 foot wow. water stream. Wow, well that's way taller than any building would have been. Mostly, yeah, 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 yeah. You can see why this was such a big deal when it came to Quincy mm -hmm. that this is this was high tech stuff. Yeah. And this was the first, believed to be the first one of these in the state of Illinois at the time. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Okay. And do these, do, the, do these panels lift up or do no they those anything? are all bolted down oh, they're, okay they're so all they just don't... part of the, the part of the chassis okay. is what so those they don't are. they don't move they don't do anything no the moving no. parts are all right yes, here that's it yep okay um so i want to see the how, now you've got the fire department here mm -hmm. yes <laughs> and it's 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 perfect because they know what they're doing that's right and they're young and healthy and they can pump this thing so right. let's get this thing moving working okay what do you say? okay okay That's pretty good range. It is with yeah. just four guys on it. Oh, you mean if you had more than four, you'd, you'd get be better range? Even, yeah. Okay. It's all based on manpower. Let's see what we got here. Is that hard work? It's hard work. Yeah. yeah. Especially on a hot, humid morning. Yeah, they would have guys switching out. Uh huh. As they're pumping, they would just do, rotate do, in do and out. Do you mind if I handle that? Right is ahead. it going to throw me? No, it will not. Wow. It is heavy though. Well, it's it full is, of water. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. yeah. And there is back pressure. I mean, they may have 20, 25 pounds yeah. on it now. And look right down there. There's, there's your newest, that's right. your that's newest, the newest pumper one. there, huh? We're gonna take a look at that too, if that's okay. Sounds good. Here, let me hand this back to All you. All right. Um, how'd they get this thing here from New York City? They shipped it by boat to the Gulf of Mexico, to the mouth of Mississippi on a steamship. As you see, the, they're slacking. They're slacking, yeah. and you can see, boy, it doesn't take long for the water pressure to run That's out. That's right. Does it? Yeah. One more time, guys. One more. Sure. Okay. Let's see it. Ready? Let's see it. Yeah. Let's see how long it takes to build up. No time at all. Yeah. Once you have water in it and have the system yeah. primed, you're. It's just a matter of pumping. Just manpower. You don't need to, they won't need to lift weights today. No, it worked out. It's done. Yeah. I, I'm, I cut you off. It no, came that's... up from the Gulf of Mexico. It came. Up they delivered it by river. The, yes, up the Mississippi and then on to uh, coaches mm -hmm. on a uh, with an easy, easy 
stage, I think they called it. Mm -hmm. uh, it was, so they just uh, shipped it by land from there. Mm -hmm. um, the train system wasn't very reliable out here at that time. Yeah. So they took it up the long route. So this will never see service again. It won't have to because no. you've got all this money. But, right. but it does get out every once in a while for the yes. public to see it. Yep, yeah, yeah. and uh, we let anybody who wants to pump it is welcome to I know you invited me, but I don't <laughs> want to work that hard. <laughs> you see what it is. Well, you can see. I mean, those guys yeah, are Nobody really hard. wants to pump it. Everybody yeah. wants to spray it. Yeah, that's what we found when we get it out. It's, yeah. yeah. Oh, well, say, make sure you tell these guys thanks for, for coming out and helping absolutely, us do this. Absolutely. Okay. They're yeah. happy to. Everybody's happy to get it out. When I ask, when I go to get guys for it i get plenty of people who are yeah. anxious to help it's kind of fun you don't get to do it rob mellon uh, now the pumper lives in this building it does and we, we call it this the stables but it's not really the stables john wood's mansion john wood had his stables at this location that's right yes it was later those were torn down and this was built as a garage it's still historical though sure and yeah. it's got a lot of history back. in there we're looking at cool john stuff. that sign actually was on his stables. That yeah. sign was on his stables that said here, there was a whole complex here. You know, John Wood really loved horses and carriages and taking horseback rides mm -hmm. and so forth. So he had a pretty large stable complex. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. Okay, and that would have been stretched on both 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 ways out from Probably, here. Probably, yes. Yeah. Okay, now this is an interesting building because um, when you have it open for tours, you'll, you'll open this up too. And the pumper would be right where our cameraman is standing, right, right there. You also have this really, beautiful hearse and I'm, I'm not sure what the history of this hearse is but that kind of shows you what it was like in the day doesn't it shows what it was like in the day and that goes back to the uh, northern part of the county of course we're the historical society for the entire Adams County and so that kind of celebrates the northern part of the county's history mm-hmm mm -hmm. and that's that would have been a person who could afford this hearse would have been well off to, to really well off to, be, to help be buried by this hearse that would have been that would have been something that only the upper crust would have been able to afford I, I assume and I think you've seen in some of the Lincoln processions he had a pretty elaborate hearse and that's pretty oh, yeah. elaborate for the yeah. northern part of Adams County mm -hmm. and the pumper that we've been talking about um, would would usually go right here and if we go outside we can see that uh, the fellow that restored it actually has has built a dolly for I guess it's a dolly a rolling dolly there to, to put it on and, and you can see it's not it's not a piece of cake taking it out because it takes a forklift. Well, <laughs> it takes a forklift to get it off of the off to off of its uh, you know stand and so forth. Yeah. He did that to take pressure off the wheels because 1838 is a long time ago when it yeah. was constructed and of course it went into operation in 1839. And so this way just kind of helps preserve it. So it's sure. a way to take pressure off of those wheels. Yeah, there was a time, and let's walk out here because what we can do is we can go take another look at it. We saw what, what pristine condition it's in, but, but when it came back, well, well let's talk about the history of it first. It went from Quincy after just being in service for like, I think maybe nine years to Shell Bynum, Missouri. That's right. And yeah. I guess they wanted to upgrade and they got a newer one so they could afford to get rid of the old pump number one, right? That's right. They okay. sold it to, Shelbina, and they had it for a while, and then after a number of years while it was in service in Missouri, <laughs> the Firemen's Be Benevolence Association decided to get it back. Mm -hmm. And so that's when they brought it back to town, and it's lived in Quincy ever since then. Mm -hmm. But it w didn't look like this. <laughs> didn't look like that. A little I mean, rougher. it looks yeah. beautiful. It's pristine, it's awesome. like I yeah. said. So how did that happen? Well, it's been, um, you know, refurbished on a couple of different occasions. You know, you had Mr. Bickhouse A.C. Bickhouse's name's on the side. He he's, was really instrumental in bringing it back. He was a local alderman here and he had a lot of influence. He wanted to make sure this was protected. Mm -hmm. So when they initially refurbished it, they, they were going to build this structure and so forth and put it in just so similar to that so people can come and, and check it out. Eventually, it went to the fire department, it went to City Hall, it went to Highland Park, which is on the northern part wow, of town. Way up. Oh, it's, oh, okay, that, this Highland Park. The, okay. our, just ours. Gotcha. Nowadays. Yeah. And so the, um, you know, the fire pumpers lived in different places. By the 1990s, been pretty rough at that point, yeah. and that's when a local businessman stepped in, grandson of A.C. Bickhouse, and refurbished it. And of course, the man's a brilliant, a brilliant machinist. So yeah. he's the, he's the reason why it's in the condition it's in. Today. Yeah. It's had several different names throughout its uh, iteration. It is called the Quincy, Quincy Number no. 1, Old Rough and Ready, <laughs> and even the AC Big House. So it's had a lot of different names. <laughs> well, it deserves a lot of names because it is, it's spectacular. And like I said, we, I think I mused about, with you about this earlier. 
you know, there were thousands of these because every every city had to have one before the steam before steam be, became possible. Sure. But very few of them, I think, are probably in existence, and it, especially not in this kind of condition. Not in that condition. Yeah. You need someone like that, like I mentioned, that businessman who had that type of know-how. And like I said, he's a genius in terms of machinery. He's the one that got it into the condition it is mm -hmm. in today. And then operational. You know, from 1838 yeah. when it was constructed to today, and now we're out spraying it today. That's pretty amazing. Well, well you know, and he, he had a lot of work to do because, you know, those, those, all of that pumping action, I'm sure those were all leaking and the, the pressure was gone and he had, to, he had to repair all that stuff. He had to repair it all, yeah. yeah. You know what else the fire department did? They brought their newest pumper. And so we kind of get a chance to contrast what was used in Absolutely. 1839 yes. with what's used in 2022, which is kind of interesting. So we're going to go take a look at this. Absolutely. Okay. Well, Cole, we're sitting in, in technology that's 180 years newer than that pumper. But this is also a pumper, isn't it? It's just it's, the most modern pumper in the fleet. That's right. The principle's still the same. It's just yeah. everything around it has changed, <laughs> yeah, for right. sure. And this happens to be the one that you drive. Yes, it right? is. Yes, okay. it's Engine us, 5. Point us out the features. Now, you've got, you've just had a, an alarm. Yes. And you know where the fire, you pull up to the fire. What's okay. the first thing you do? Well, the first thing we do is we would stop, put the engine in, the transmission into neutral mm -hmm. and set our parking brake. There's a valve over here, a lever that operates a valve, a switch that switches it from road mode to pump mode. Uh -huh. So once you disengage the transmission from the drivetrain, it engages to the water pump. Then you'd put it, the transmission back into gear mm -hmm. and that would start the pump spinning. Okay. Once that's done and it gives you the okay that it's ready to pump, you leave the cab and then you'd start flowing okay. water. And that's when you head this way, right? That's when I'd, while I'm doing this, the rest of the crew is going to be assessing what the situation is, of course. If there's a fire, they're going to be deploying an attack line, which would be off the front bumper or off the back. Mm -hmm. And they're pre-connected to the pipe typing that would go to the pump. So as soon as they get the hose out and get up to ready to the fire, I open a valve to allow the, t we have 750 gallons of water in mm -hmm. here. I'd open a valve to allow the water to flow to the pump, which instead of the piston pump, we have a centripetal pump. Uh -huh. So it spins the water and throws it out, creates the pressure. Mm -hmm. And then once the tank is open to the pump, water is ready, is, is pressurized. And then I would pull another valve, depending on what line they have, and it would send water to them. And I could control the pressure that they have. Uh, you lose you lose pressure through friction loss through the hose mm -hmm. and uh, the nozzle has to have operate properly yeah. at a certain, so you have to figure calculations. So, so, so we're talking about water that's already on this already truck. On it's been truck. loaded yes. on how many gallons? Are 750. We 750, yes. that would go pretty quick, wouldn't it? It can. A hand line would operate for a little bit, but if you're gonna use the deck gun on top, a master stream device, they call those, yeah. those can flow a thousand gallons a minute. So if you get ah. that going, you're less than a minute of So water. what you have to do, and, and maybe what we do is, is go around, what you have to do, mm -hmm is trust that the next unit that's coming is gonna locate a fire hydrant and get water to you. Yes, and they will know that that's their job. They, it's set up that way. When we're deployed, when we're dispatched out, the first engine knows that it's the attack engine. The second engine knows it's water supply. Mm -hmm. They'll locate a hydrant. We have the technologies to where we can see where the hydrant is before we get there. Mm -hmm. um, they will stop at the hydrant. They'll stage if we haven't and we'll call for water supply. We need to lay a line. Mm -hmm. And then they will leave a guy at the hydrant, and they'll start deploying supply line to the scene, mm -hmm. to where we are. And when they get, get to us, they disconnect, they connect that five inch supply line to uh, our intake. And then I would open this valve, and this, this pipe goes straight into the pump. And then we wouldn't need the tank on, yeah, right. water tank. Okay. So how many pumpers would, nor would normally two pumpers respond? or, or would it Normally it's three apparatus. Three? We okay. have, it would be three mm -hmm. pump, trucks that could pump. One is a ladder truck. So yeah. it, we try to keep it as a ladder mm -hmm. truck when we can, mm -hmm. but it does pump too. So mm -hmm. it's a three, a general alarm is three apparatus and then the um, assistant chief that's on duty that day, the okay. shift chief. One more stop if we can go sure. to the rear. And you can show us how how these hoses get, get utilized. Yes, this is, when we load hose, we load them in a certain way. And there's different way, methods of doing it depending on the department. Mm -hmm. We try to standardize it in our city, in our department, so everybody knows if you're on a different truck, you know how things work. This is called a Minuteman load. 
So we have 100 feet of hose mm -hmm. on top of 150 feet. The fireman would come back, pull this top section out, load it on his shoulder. He'd reach back and grab these loops and he'd just start walking. And it would deploy this 150 feet and then he would flake it off, the rest of the 100 off his, mm -hmm. in whatever pattern he's ready and get up to the door, start putting his air pack on, his mask, getting ready to go make entry and fire attack. That hose is heavy, I'll bet. It is. I mean, it you is. got it on your back plus your. It, your it is. It takes. It, you got to yeah. stay fit yeah. for it for yeah. the well, job. Yeah, we saw him. Mm -hmm. we saw yeah, yeah. You still that, that hasn't changed either. You still got to be fit because um, we also have. This is inch and three quarter. This is our standard attack line. Mm -hmm. um, this is two and a half inch, so it's uh, it's quite a bear to move. Yeah. We you want to have at least two people on that all the time. But yeah, yep. yep. It, that's another attack. That's a bigger fire. Use bigger water. And then this would be our five inch supply line. And this is what they would hook up to the hydrant. Uh -huh. And then they would hook it up to the engine. Mm -hmm. And once that's laid out, it's not going anywhere. It just yeah. stays where it is. Yeah. Rob, I don't know if you know this or not, but if our viewers have a really good memory, 19 years ago, we shot our first Illinois story. In fact, the man who's holding that camera actually <laughs> shot it. 19 years ago, this was our first Illinois story when this cabin, this log cabin, was moved down State Street and planted here at the John Woods Mansion grounds. That's right. It's pretty neat. That's really neat, <laughs> yes. Of course, as you probably know from the story, the cabin was actually in Perry, Missouri, inside a farmhouse. And when they took that farmhouse down, discovered the cabin, the Lewis family purchased it, moved it to Quincy, which was way out on State Street, mm -hmm. beyond the edge of the town. And then when they decided to give it to the Historical Society, which we use it for a couple of different reasons. The historic reason and the fact that John Wood lived in a log cabin very similar to this right before he moved into the mansion. Huh, what and an that, upgrade for him, huh? A little bit. You know, there's an amazing story about the kids telling the story, like Daniel Wood tells the story as a, as a young kid walking in for the first time to this living from a log cabin into Pop, the mansion. His eyes popped out, I'm it sure. Was out, like out. a palace. Yeah. You know? Oh yeah, yes. yeah well, uh, and this was a nice cabin. It's, it's got a, nice a sleeping cabin. loft, it's, it's got a lot of room in it. A lot of Americans weren't living this good. That's right, yeah. John Wood was. <laughs> yeah, John Wood was. 1835 though. Not many. Not uh, some many. of them were probably still had sod, you know, living in sod, not, mm -hmm. not log cabins like this. But this, now it's interesting, you mentioned the family that gave this to, or I guess gave it to the yes. Historical uh -huh. Society. Sure. They also sort of endowed you with an, uh, money to keep it up, didn't they? That's right. And a log cabin is very difficult to maintain. Just recently, and we normally have a, an Amish crew come in and do the restorations when mm -hmm. we need that to happen. And you can kind of see the, the difference in the chinking and the color of the chinking, the things that we've had to repair over time. But we just did that last summer, actually. Mm -hmm. So it's an ongoing process to maintain. Well, the mansion takes us a little bit to maintain sure. as well, but so does the cabin. Yeah. And we, we, we make sure that we take care of it. Yeah, so. can we go in? Absolutely. Yeah, this would be wonderful for school trips to be able to come through here and see. I mean, you, you can tell kids, you know, how it was back in the day, but they have to they have to see it, feel it, and smell it. And you can smell the old wood in here. You, you can, can smell it. I you love can. it. And this is exactly what we do. It was part of the process when we moved it here. Not only to do the history of it and the connection with John Wood, but also we have a very robust third grade program, and they come to the cabin. We have them write in ink. They go to the herb garden. We have a Native American story we tell out on the grounds, mm -hmm. and that's part of our third grade, what we call the third grade log cabin program. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And uh, you could see how, I don't know if the steps would have been built like this. Um, I know a lot of the lofts that I've seen had ladders going up to the loft, but this right. one appears to actually have had a staircase, which is a pretty classy deal too. That is. And there would have been room up there for, oh, if oh, you had a family of four, probably very ample space. Ample space. Sleeping. If yeah. you go up there, you'll be, you'd be surprised on how much space there is upstairs. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you have some historical items here, um, a loom over here, and mm -hmm. just things to pique kids' interest. That's right. Uh, that, mi that might have or, or may not have been in, in this log cabin, but uh, it was, they would have been normal use at that time, wouldn't they? Right. Our, our collections manager, or the, the chair of that committee, is currently in the process of going through all of this, make sure it's all period correct, mm -hmm. because that's what that's the next step for here. Make sure that everything even inside is period correct. Yeah, yeah. It's it's uh, it's really a very very nice. Um, the brick fireplace, I, that's not a fireplace. What what is the brick for? Is that just a uh, support, or that used to be a fireplace? Yeah. Okay. Oh, it was. Okay. It's just not not used for that now. Well, 
Yes, I guess it is because the stove pipe goes into, into the chimney. So that's how it works. Okay. Well, thank you for everything today. You're this has been a, a very, You're very, very interesting day. Um, uh, you know, for the fire department to, to send their men down here and do all that for us was, was a real hoot. And we couldn't have done it without you getting the pumper out. So thank you very much. You're very welcome. Okay. Um, on the John Woods grounds here, this is, of course, the home for the Quincy and Adams County Historical Society. And this cabin is viewable. The mansion is, is tourable. And uh, if, if the stables are open, you can even get a, uh, inside to take a look at that pumper. With another Illinois Story in Quincy, I'm Mark McDonald. Thanks for watching. Illinois Stories is brought to you by the Corporation for Public Broadcasting, Illinois Arts Council Agency, and by the support of viewers like you. Thank you.